I replaced my quarter of a million software engineering salary in less than a year. No funding, no audience, and no viral moment. Just a practical system that 28 x my income without burning out and without risking it all on some random startup idea. And in this video, I'll break down exactly how I do it all over again, step by step, even if I was starting from zero. If you're new here, welcome. I'm Bago from climbing a corporate ladder in Fortune 500 from a junior developer all the way to a manager to now building seven figure businesses. I've spent the last decade refining strategies that turn software engineers into impactful entrepreneurs. Without further ado, let's get straight into it. Now, most people think that the only way that you can replace your software engineering salary is by building a unicorn startup, going viral on Twitter, or just grinding 100 hour work weeks on a specific SaaS and hoping you hit the jackpot. But there's a much slower, safer, and smarter way to hit that same $20,000 a month mark using the skills that you already have. And if I had only one year to do it, here's exactly how it would start. The first step requires you to actually stop thinking that your job is secure. You see, you've optimized your entire life around the salary that depends entirely on somebody else's business staying profitable. Your manager has more control over your lifestyle than you do. Your time is being traded, your creativity is pretty boxed in because of all the red tape, and even if you're in the top 5%, all it really takes is one budget cut, one AI rollout, and suddenly you're out of the game. It's like you're standing on a frozen lake. It looks solid, but you don't realize how thin the ice is until it starts cracking. And that's why I wouldn't really wait until the ice breaks to figure out an escape plan. I'd build something that catches me if I fall. A parachute of sorts. And here's what that parachute would look like. So here's how you start. Step number one, you need to shift your mindset. You need to understand your salary is not your safety net. It is your starting capital. Step number two, you need to set a 12 month target, ideally replacing 50 to 100% of your salary from a second source of income. And step number three, schedule time weekly to build that specific income stream, be it consulting, contract creation, a micro product, a SaaS, whatever the case, something real outside of your typical nine to five. And the moment you do this, you stop relying on fragile foundations. You take back control. You erase the fear of actually being blindsided by layoffs, reorganizations, or just simply irrelevance. When you build your own systems and erase the fear of being blindsided, you'll actually gain what most developers secretly want more than money, and that is leverage, stability, and freedom. In fact, one of my students, John, was able to do this within one month. He was able to make $22,500 by simply redirecting some of his free time after work towards his specific business. And he's not the only one. A recent McKinsey study found that 36% of US workers now earn income independently. And among tech workers, that number is actually climbing fast and for a very specific reason. The illusion of tech stability has been shattered and the layoffs in 2025 are just the beginning. Because once you realize that you don't have to ask for permission to earn, you can never go back to a typical nine to five. And for some of you, you've probably already spent weeks, even months, maybe tweaking a side project trying to perfect your UI, obsessing over features, and maybe you've already shipped it. And when you did, nothing happened. At most, one or two sales, but probably you had no sales, no users, and no real traction. So you might have started to wonder if you're just simply not cut out for this life. Maybe you weren't meant to be an entrepreneur or a founder. Maybe you were just meant to be a regular software engineer. The problem isn't you, it's how you're thinking about it. Let me explain. Imagine you're stuck on the side of the road with a flat tire. You don't care what brand of jacks somebody offers you. If the jack is built in React, Python, JS, it's all the same. Most engineers obsess over building the perfect jack, but the only thing people care about is whether you can actually get them back on the road. So whether you have that jack or not. And the mistake happens because coding trains you to think in features and not feelings. You get good at solving technical problems, but you forget how to solve human problems. And the more skilled you are as an engineer, the easier it is to fall into this trap, thinking you just build something impressive and grand, and naturally the market will care and you'll get traction and you'll make a lot of money. But that's just one guaranteed way to actually waste months building solutions for people who were never even asking for one. And this will leave you demotivated, broke, and blaming yourself that it works for everybody else besides you. So the truth is that all these other founders, they aren't better builders than you. They're better communicators than you. And that's why it's not about being the smartest builder 
in the room. It's all about being the clearest communicator. And that's where our second step comes into play. The one who understands pain better than anybody else will be able to make a lot more money than anybody else. So if I had to rebuild my income in 12 months, I wouldn't start with a product first. Instead, I would start with a problem because I know once I get the problem right, there is always somebody on the other side who will buy it from me. So instead of asking, what can I build? You need to start asking, what specific pain point can I solve? What problem can I remove for people? Because when somebody's in pain, they don't care how polished your product is. They don't care what tech stack you're using. They don't care about all the features. They don't care about the design. They just want one thing, relief. Can you get them from a state of in pain to a state of no pain? And if you can get them that, you'll be paid before you even get up the call with them. So here are the steps that you should take. Step number one, you need to talk to at least five people in your network and ask what's slowing them down at work. If they own a business, even better, ask about their business problem. Step number two, look for patterns, not in necessarily what they're doing, but in what they're specifically struggling with. And step number three, create a dead simple offer that solves one of those pain points quickly. And in the beginning, do not worry about code. Do not worry about scaling. Just find the pain and focus on removing that pain with as little friction as possible. And when you do this, two things will happen. Number one, you will stop building in isolation. And number two, you will start getting real world feedback extremely quickly, which you can use to iterate and create an even better product or service that solves that pain point. And after all of this, you'll realize that you're not just a developer anymore. You are somebody who now knows how to create outcomes people would happily pay for. And once you realize that people pay for outcomes, not necessarily products, then there's only one question left in your mind. And that is, well, where do I find these so-called customers who will be willing to pay me? And this is where most software engineers actually freeze. They convince themselves that they aren't a salesperson or that sales is sleazy or that they don't know how to pitch anybody or that they're best behind the computer screen. And this leads them to wait. They keep building, tweaking and watching videos, but these things aren't the exact reason why they're stuck. So think of it like being the best chef, but you're standing in your kitchen making a five-star meal for pretty much nobody because you think you need to build a restaurant first. Even though there are hungry people right outside your door, you're not inviting them in. That's exactly what this is like. The real reason most engineers stay stuck is because they've been trained to wait for permission. But as a founder, you don't need permission. Most people have only ever made money when a company said, here, here's your job, here's the scope of your work, and here's your salary. So when there's no job board, there's no recruiter, there's no permission slip, there's no Jira tickets, people often default to silence. Even though they could make money, they just don't believe that they're allowed to initiate that specific action. And that mindset, well, it's what keeps some of the most brilliant problem solvers on this planet underpaid, underleveraged, and worst of all, invisible. They spend months online trying to compete with thousands of other individuals, with thousands of other developers, chasing the same exact few clients, when the fastest path was actually never online to begin with. So if I had 12 months to replace my software engineering salary, I wouldn't start by trying to sell to people online. Instead, I would go somewhere where most developers never even think to look. And what is this special place that no developer goes? Well. It's actually simple. The easiest money you'll ever make as a software engineer won't come from going viral, won't come from cold emailing or cold calling, won't come from Twitter DMs or trying to go viral on Twitter or building any specific funnels or running ads. It will come from walking down the street and offering to solve a real problem for a real business. It will come from asking your friends and family and people in your network what problems they're facing and solving their problems. In short, it will come from offline. Because here's the truth, most local businesses are running on duct tape systems, clunky software and outdated tools. You have something that these businesses don't even know exists. Automation, data, efficiency. And if you can walk in, identify one of these broken processes and offer to fix it, guess what? They're gonna pay you. Not because you're a marketer, but because you are a problem solver. And these are two different worlds. Us as software engineers, we see the world entirely different as other people, especially these local business owners. So be it in healthcare, be it in cafes, be it gyms, chiropractor offices, dental offices, law firms, they have so many problems. So what you need to do is choose two to three businesses, let's say, and go to them. Talk with them. Look at where they're wasting time specifically. Any manual intake processes, paper forms, repeated emails, any inefficiencies that you can spot in their specific businesses. And last of all, offer to either automate it or rebuild the flow entirely. And don't pitch them. Just say, hey, I think I can fix this for you. It's really as simple as that. And the result, 
Well, you'll get to skip all the noise. You'll get to skip the rejection loops that you get. You'll get to skip the three month, oh, I'm still working on my offer trap. You'll get to skip all of that. And instead, you'll get your first win, your first testimonial, and your first real income stream. And of course, while this might not be entirely scalable at first, this is when it will click for you. That you don't need to change who you are to make money. You just need to change where you show up and where you look to make more money. And following this, let's be real. Your environment is gonna matter. If you're surrounded by people who think software is just quote unquote IT work, who have never hired a consultant in their life, who see $500 as expensive for a business tool, then that's exactly what you're gonna get. And this, what I'm telling you, might feel impossible. But if you live in an ecosystem where people are building, scaling, outsourcing, and solving problems with software every single day, guess what? Opportunities will start finding you. The saying that sometimes the fastest way to grow your income is to change your area code, that is the move. That's very true. For those of you outside of the US, look for those type of cities in Europe. And if you can come to the US, come to the US. Join co-working spaces, indie hacker groups, and the local tech meetups. Join your city's chamber of commerce, especially if you're from the US. Physically embed yourself in an environment where your skills are seen as valuable and not confusing. Because geography isn't just about where you live. It's about what's normal around you. And when it becomes normal, to charge, let's say $10,000, $15,000, $20,000 for solving a simple workflow problem, you start asking, okay, who's next? Who's my next client? Who'd I go to now? If you're done building somebody else's dream while your own ideas sit on a back burner and you're actually ready to escape the nine to five golden handcuffs and build a business that's truly independent from your employer, then this is your moment right now. Inside code to CEO, link below, I'll show you exactly how to turn your engineering skills into income streams that you specifically own. With a roadmap that's already helped dozens of mid to senior level devs replace their salary, quit their jobs, and build real true freedom. So if you're serious about making that leap, the link's in the description below. I'm telling you, you already have the skills. Now it's simply time to own the outcome and stop relying on anybody else but yourself. As always, thank you for watching and have a good one.